Hi friends, our next chapter is ray optics. In the last video, we have seen what is electromagnetic radiation, right? And we have also seen what is uh, electromagnetic spectrum. In that spectrum, there is a region of, uh, of electromagnetic waves where the lambda ranges from 400 nanometers to 750 nanometers. This region belongs to visible light, that is the light which we can see with our naked eye. And uh, this chapter is about that, the behavior of light when it passes through different mediums. Now, you know that sp speed of light is 3 into 10 power 8 meters per second in vacuum. So, light travels with great speed and it also travels in straight lines. First of all, let us get introduced to some terms. Light travels in straight line, right? Ray. Ray is something, what? A path of light from one point to another. So, this is a ray, see. And what is a beam? Beam is just a bunch of rays. A bundle of such rays is known as beams. When light encounters some reflecting surface, it reflects, right? There are some laws of this reflection. First law is that angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. Now, how should I explain you? There is something called as normal. Normal is the perpendicular to the surface. Or here it is a sp spherical surface, right? So the line joining the center to that point of uh, incidence, this point, this will be the normal, the dotted line. This is normal. And here this is the normal. Now the incident ray makes an angle with the normal, right? This is known as angle of incidence. And the reflected ray makes an angle with normal. This is known as angle of reflection. First law of reflection is that angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Whether it is a spherical mirror or a plane mirror, it doesn't matter. This law holds everywhere. And other law is that the incident ray, the normal and the reflected ray, reflected ray, all the three lie in a same plane. Here also, all the three rays lie in a same plane. Geometric center of a spherical mirror, whether it is convex or concave, the geometric center, this one, is known as pole. In case of spherical mirrors, when it is the case with lenses, say you have a convex convex lens or concave lens, the geometric center is known as optical center. Here it is known as poles. And the line joining the pole and the center of curvature, say if this is the center of curvature because this is a part of sphere, right? These are spherical mirrors. So this line joining the center of curvature and the pole. This line is known as principal axis. There is a convention to measure distances in ray optics and what we are following is Cartesian sign convention. It is quite possible that you might have heard of something else because each one follows one convention in ray optics but I strongly, I strongly suggest you to stick to one convention otherwise it leads to a lot of confusion. However, our convention says that all distances are measured from the pole of the mirror or optical center of lens. So, distances to the right, the second point, distances measured in the same direction as incident light are taken as positive and those measured in the direction opposite to the direction of incident light are taken as negative. So, if we say this is the direction of incident light, light is coming from the left. I mean, if you have a source here, then all the right, right, the distances, those distances measured to the right are positive and those measured to the left that is opposite to the direction of incident light, they are negative. And similarly, the height measured upwards with respect to the principal axis are positive and those measured downwards with respect to the principal axis are negative. This is positive and this is negative. When you throw a beam of paraxial rays onto a convex or concave mirror, in the case of concave mirror, they intersect at a point after reflection. This point is known as focus. And in the case of convex mirror, they don't intersect, but the reflected rays, when extended backwards, they appear to intersect at a point. Are you getting me? This point is known as focus for convex mirror. However, this point, the it is at some distance from the pole, right? That distance between the pole and focus is known as focal length. Let's try to find the focal length now. 
observe this am is the incident ray and after reflection it is passing through this focus okay f is the focus now from triangle mcd you can say that tan theta is md by cd and from triangle fmd you can say that tan 2 theta is md by fd this is clear now observe one thing if theta is very very small for a very small theta i can say that tan theta is nothing but theta so theta is equal to md by cd for a very small theta and 2 theta is md by fd when will this theta be very small when the incident rays are very close to the principal axis then the theta will be very small and in that case what happens if the incident ray is very close to the principal axis d will be very close to p i can neglect the dp distance actually fp is my focal length right when theta is very very small d will be very near to p so i can say that fd is my focal length of course on this approximation so from these two equations what i can write 2 theta theta is what md by cd and cd is nothing but the radius of curvature of that spherical mirror actually it is cp because we just said that d is very close to p i can approximate it to radius is equal to md by fd right md by what is fd the focal length so md and md gets cancels cancelled and hence i have my equation for focal length as r by 2 radius of curvature by 2 this is the focal length of a spherical mirror when the rays actually intersect at a point as in the case of this picture then that is called a real image but here when the rays don't actually intersect but you can see the image from here when observed from this point you can see the image but the rays are not intersecting they are appearing to diverge from a point so in this case it is a virtual image did you understand me in other terms i can say that you here you can place a paper or cardboard and get the image on it so real images can be caught on a screen but virtual images can't be caught on a screen consider an object a b here light goes like this and after reflection these two lights intersect at this point so the final image of a b is formed here let it be a dash and b dash now let this point be m and this is the pole of that mirror by loss of uh, by loss of reflection angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection right so angle a p b is the angle of incidence here and angle b p a dash is the angle of reflection are you getting me so i is equal to r and AB is perpendicular to the principal axis, right? As well as A dash, B dash is also perpendicular to the principal axis. So, angle ABP is equal to angle A dash, B dash, P is equal to 90 degrees, right? And you have these two angles equal and these two angles equal. So, I can say that triangle APB is similar to triangle A dash, P, B dash. Since these two triangles are similar, the ratio of their sides should be same, right? So I can say that B dash A dash by AB should be equal to B dash P by BP. Is this fine? So I have one more similar pair of triangles. Uh, observe this. A dash, B dash and F. F is the focus. This triangle is similar to m p f these two this this triangle m p f are you getting why because m p can be considered as a straight line because we are dealing with uh, incident rays which are very close to the principal axis right we discussed this before by the same principle this is perpendicular hence this is 90 here also this is 90 a dash b dash f and these two angles b dash f a and uh, the other angle m fp these two are uh, vertically opposite angles right they are opposite angles so these two angles are equal and hence this triangle is similar to this triangle now what can i get from this i can say that a dash b dash by mp 
is equal to b dash f by pf this is one equation and this is another equation and note one more thing that ab is equal to mp because this is a parallel right am is parallel to bp so ab will be equal to mp observe that and hence from these two equations what can i finally write I can write that b dash f by fp will be equal to b dash p minus fp by fp because b dash f is nothing but b dash p minus fp observe this b dash f this one is nothing but b dash p minus fp that's what i wrote here and that is equal to what b dash p by bp right here b dash p by bp is equal to what we wrote now and hence finally i'll equate this one to b dash p by bp b dash p is what it is my final image distance and since it is to the left of my pole i'll write it as minus v v stands for final image distance okay and we use u whenever we want to write what object distance so bp is my object distance and please feel free to rewind the video and uh, take a look at the diagram if you want better understanding and fp is my focal length since it is also to the left of my pole i'll take it to be negative so i'll put these symbols u v f in my equation in this equation v dash p is minus v and f is minus fp right so it will be plus f here and here i have minus f again this will be equal to b dash p is minus v and bp is also minus u and simplifying this what will i get v minus f by f will be equal to v by u writing it as uh, vu is equal to fu plus fv and the same equation when written in a more good looking form looks like this 1 by f is equal to 1 by u plus 1 by v this is known as mirror equation where f is the focal length u is the object distance and v is the image distance there is something called as magnification m it is the ratio of object uh, image height to the object height that is h dash to h since you know that uh, a dash b dash p triangle is similar to a b p you can say that a dash b dash which is the image height uh, by a b which is the object height is equal to b dash p by b p right from this similarity b dash p is what it is minus v and b p is minus u but a dash b dash is towards the what towards the bottom right i mean it is downwards so it will be minus h dash by a b is normal it is h this is equal to v by u but my magnification is h dash by h so it will be equal to minus v by u this is the magnification for spherical mirrors look at this problem there is a concave mirror with radius of curvature as a minus 15 centimeters because it is towards the left right and so my focal length will be minus 7.5 centimeters if my object is placed at a distance of 10 centimeters then where will be my image use this formula 1 by v plus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f v i have to find it u i know it as minus 10 centimeters because it is towards the left and focal length will be minus 7.5 solving the equation you will get v as minus 30 centimeters it means that the image is towards the left only if the object distance was something like uh, 5 centimeters then what would have happened use the same equation you will get the v to be 15 centimeters so it is plus 15 i mean it is towards the right you get a virtual virtual image are you getting me and calculate the magnification also it gives a negative sign here and you get a positive sign in this case because minus v by u is the magnification right here v is 15 centimeters minus 15 by u is minus 5 so the magnification is 3 here and here you would have gotten minus 3 or something like that so the negative sign indicates that the image is uh, real and inverted and here it is virtual and erect
hope everything is clear in the next video we'll discuss about refraction and that's it for now bye